Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Concepts in Community Medicine. In this video, we are going to discuss the very recent NEET PG 2023 PSM recall questions. So let's quickly get started with the session. This session is the part one of NEET PG 2023 recall questions and the remaining questions will be dealt in part two. As far as PSM is concerned, I hope the questions were very much doable. We had a huge chunk of questions from nutrition chapter and as well as from infectious diseases. This session is purely based on recall given by students. And I would like to thank all my students who have helped me out in this. So let's quickly get started with the discussion. So let's discuss the questions under each topic. First is concept of health and disease. Which of the following is the best measure to assess the health status of the community and a sensitive indicator of utilization of health services? Options are infant mortality rate, maternal mortality rate, DALI and HDI. Now this is a direct straightforward one liner. All right. So without any doubt, you must be able to mark the answer to this question as infant mortality rate, which is IMR. So this keywords health status of the community and a sensitive indicator of utilization of health services are directly taken from Park textbook and IMR is the best measure to assess the health status of the community. And most of the students have confused this with DALI. DALI is disability adjusted life years. Okay, so it is a measure of premature death. Okay, premature death as well as disability. So it is in general measuring the overall disease burden of the community. All right. So to measure the overall disease burden of the community, we go for DALI. And answer to this question, health status of the community is infant mortality rate. A study was done among two groups of people working in Anilin Dye Factory for 20 years seeing the past records or documents, one group being the workers of the factory and the other the office workers of the same factory. What is this type of study? And the options are case control, retrospective cohort, prospective cohort and ecological study. Now read this question once again. We are having two groups of people. One group is the workers of the factory. And the other group is the office workers of the same factory. So it means that one group is the exposed group and the other one we are having the non-exposed group. So what is this type of study? It is definitely a cohort study. Okay, because in a cohort study only we are taking exposed and the non-exposed group. It is not a case control study because in case control study we will take the cases and the controls, which means the deceased and the non-deceased individuals. In the question, they are not talking about the disease or the outcome. They are talking only about the exposure. So it is definitely a cohort study. But the question is, what is that type of cohort study? Whether it is prospective or whether it is retrospective cohort study. So the catch in the question is the past records or the documents. So, which means that answer to this question is retrospective cohort study because the study is not done by waiting all 20 years to see the outcome. Okay, we are go going to the past records of 20 years before and we are conducting the study. So, it is definitely a retrospective cohort study and not prospective cohort study. All right. So, if you want to know in detail about the types of cohort study, I will give the link in the description of my video on types of cohort study. Please go through it. Now the next question, a 10 year old child came to OPD according to national immunization schedule, which of the following vaccines would you advise? Options are TD vaccine, typhoid vaccine, BCG and DPT. So this is again a direct one liner. So if you know the national immunization schedule, you can answer this question. So this is a 10 year old child. So 10 and 16 years, which vaccine we are giving? We are giving TD vaccine. So answer to this question is TD vaccine. So this is the national immunization schedule. This is just for your reference. So at 10 years and 16 years, we are giving the TD vaccine. All right. 
Now the next question is a 10 year old child came to pediatric OPD with fever, rashes and coplic spots on buccal mucosa. What is the diagnosis? Options are measles, mumps, rubella and chicken pox. So we have a 10 year old child coming with fever, rashes and coplic spots. So the diagnosis is definitely measles. Why? Because measles will present with fever, maculopapular rashes and coplic spots. Coplic spot is the most significant finding of measles. Now what are these coplic spots? These are small bluish white spots on a red base uh, which is seen opposite to the first and the second lower molars. First and second lower molars. So this is the most significant finding and this will be seen one or two days even before the rash appears. So that is seen in the prodromal stage itself all right so answer to this question is measles so the next question is a baby with prematurity has low birth weight pda decreased hearing bilateral cataract what is the diagnosis options are rubella cmv toxoplasmosis and hsv which is herpes simplex virus now without any doubt answer to this question is rubella why rubella because Baby with prematurity is having low birth weight, PDA and decreased hearing and bilateral cataract. So what is it? It is nothing but congenital rubella syndrome. So in congenital rubella syndrome, the child can present with ophthalmic, auditory and cardiac anomalies. Alright. So here the child is presenting with PDA. Then decreased hearing and cataract. So answer to this question is rubella. Now the next question is a 40 year old male presented with a clean cut wound and he has received TT vaccine 10 years ago. How will you manage the wound? Options are full course tetanus to be given, full dose TT with tetanus immunoglobulin, single dose TT and no treatment. Now read the question once again we have a 40 year old male presenting with a clean cut wound and he has received the vaccine 10 years ago. Now if you know the recommendations of prevention of tetanus in the wounded you will be able to answer this question very easily. Now in case of a clean cut wound if it is less than 6 hours if the wound is clean or less than 6 hours or if there are no penetrations or lacerations. In that case, if the person has received the vaccine more than 10 years before, we give only single dose of TT. So answer to this question is single dose TT. Now regarding the prevention of tetanus in wounded, we have two categories. One is the clean wound and other one is the unclean wound. So based on the full course of TT, it is further divided into less than 5 years, 5 to 10 years, more than 10 years and not taken. So in case of a clean wound, if a person has taken full course of TT within 5 years, then nothing much has to be done, only wound care. If a person has taken full course of TT between 5 to 10 years, we give only a single dose of TT. And if a person has taken a full course of TT 10 years before, then still we give a single dose of TT. If a person has not taken any course of TT or if the immunization status of the person is not known, only in that case we give a full course of TT in case of a clean wound. In case of an unclean wound, again it is divided in the same way. So if a person has taken a full course of TT within 5 years, nothing much is done. Only wound care. If a person has taken full course of TT between 5 to 10 years, again we give a TT single dose in case of an unclean wound. So if a person has taken a full course of TT 10 years before, in that case for unclean wound we give TT single dose plus human tetanus immunoglobulin. If the person has not taken any course of TT or if the immunization status is not known in case of an unclean wound, we give a full course of TT plus human tetanus immunoglobulin. So in our question, the male presented with a clean wound and he has taken 
TT 10 years before. So he falls under this category. So clean wound with full course of TT 10 years before. So single dose of TT will be the answer to this question. The remaining questions and the other controversial questions of this NEET PG 2023 Community Medicine is coming up in part 2. So don't forget to watch part 2 as well. If you find these videos interesting and useful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share it to your friends who might find it useful and comment below for more such videos. Thank you.